Hello, this is uh, Christopher DeLay again. So this is a uh, part two of the LDAP S uh, certificate series. Um, in part one, I just covered some of the background information you would want to kind of be aware of before you started deploying LDAP S certificates to domain controllers. Um, also, I have my blog listed here, https colon slash slash xdot509.blog. I actually have the whole LDAP S thing documented there in a blog. So this video is going to be kind of a supplement to it where I'm actually kind of talking about it, but mainly the main focus here is kind of like walking through the steps. Um, if you're more interested in reading about it and reading the documented steps, you can visit my blog there on uh, LDAP S certificates to get more information. So in this particular video, we're going to be covering, or I'm going to be covering, how to just request like basically just request the Kerberos authentication template with auto enrollment. So this would be the common scenario that would be used in most instances to deploy LDAP S certificates um, to domain controllers. I probably need to change the title of this video to make uh, viewers aware of particularly what I'm covering here. But so basically the process is, is you're basically going to make sure you have auto enrollment enabled for your domain controllers and then you're either going to use the default Kerberos authentication template or duplicate it and you're going to publish that to the CA and then pretty much you are done so we're just going to kind of walk through those steps <coughs> excuse me so here we go into my lab so this is my CA right here and uh, I'm going to go to the Kerberos authentication template which is right here and so a kind of a good practice is to not use the default template but to duplicate templates another good idea is to come up with a good naming uh, syntax to use for templates I don't in this lab I don't really have a good one you can use like organization name template or whatever makes the most sense for you but it's nice if you have something consistent so the way you would get here is the typical way you would get here is if you're in your CA you can right click and do manage and that'll bring you to the certificate templates in MC. So I am going to come back and I'm going to duplicate this template, but there's one thing you want to want to cover real quick before we do that. Is we want to make sure that we have auto enrollment configured for our domain controllers. I do have a video that covers auto enrollment. So auto enrollment is just a way to automatically issue and renew certificates. And there's basically a GPO that needs to be set up for that to function. I believe I have it already uh, set up, so I just need to figure out where that's at. So in my domain controllers OU, I have several GPOs, so my guess is it's set here. What you can do is if you're not sure that it's set up in your environment, what you can do is you can go to um, your domain controller and you can do like rsop.msc you could do a gp result too this is just maybe a little bit a quicker way to do it so just go in your dc and run rsop.msc and that's going to give you the result instead of policy and you can see if you already have it deployed and you can kind of figure out which gpo it's configured from so you're just going to go into computer configuration windows settings security set, window settings, security settings, and then we're going to go to public key policies. And then we're going to go into certificate service at client auto enrollment. So you want it enabled with the two check boxes. I'll show you and then I'll show you exactly the same thing in the policy. And this is set in local group policy, which is interesting. Okay. This is really not what I want. I don't really want to set in local group policy. I want to set in domain policy. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to set it in the default domain controllers policy or I could create a new policy. So let's just create a new one. You could edit one of the existing ones. So we're just going to call it DC Auto Enrollment. I'm just going to click OK. And so there is this GPO that's now linked to the domain controllers container. I'm just going to go and click on that GPO, and then I'm going to right click and do edit. 
So I'm basically going to the same place. Uh, security settings, public key policies, and then auto enrollment. I'm going to set it to enabled. And then I'm going to do two checkboxes and then click OK. And then close that. Now to speed things up, so since we don't want to sit here for hours waiting for this policy to apply or however long it takes on domain controllers, and maybe I think it may be different on domain controllers, but anyways, um, so we're just going to do a GP update force. And if I could type, that would be awesome. Okay, so we're going to let our do policy update, and then we're going to just refresh our RSOP to show that it's coming from the GPO. So this you want to have set up um, prior to working on your template. Okay, so we're going to go back here and we're going to actually be able to refresh query. And it's going to take a few seconds for it to read this information and display what's currently applied. Okay, so basically we're going to that same place, computer configuration, window settings, security settings, public key policies, um, auto enrollment. So it's still set here, and you see it's now, we're getting it from our uh, DC enrollment um, GPO, which we just set up, which is good. So now we're going to go back to the CA and go back to the certificate templates MMC and I'm going to duplicate this Kerberos. I've duplicated another time, a bunch of other times, but for some of these demos I'm going to duplicate it again just to show the steps. So duplicate template and I'm going to just change the name to, I, don't, I want to do a name that doesn't conflict with whatever I have, so I'm just going to do FC Kerberos authentication. Hopefully that name's not taken already. And then I'm just going to click OK. So you notice I didn't really change anything there on the template. Um, I mean, we can take a look at it real quick. It's good for a year. You could change that if you really want to. Then there's the security. So you'll notice that read only domain controllers, um, domain controllers, and um, enterprise domain controllers all have enroll and auto enroll permissions to the template. The one thing, there was one thing that you may want to consider changing. So the, the scenario is if you already have like domain controller or domain controller authentication certificate templates issued to domain controllers and you want this template to supersede those. So in other words, when this template certificate is issued based on this template, it basically archives those um, certificates from the domain controller and domain controller authentication template. And we can certainly do that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to superseded templates. And then I'm going to add, we're going to add our domain controller and domain controller authentication. And we're going to click OK. So now we've uh, kind of superseded those. So we'll take a look at it again. So this was my FC Kerberos authentication. And when we go into superseded templates, we see domain controller and domain controller authentication. OK, so we have that there. And then we're just going to need to add that template to the CA. So we're going to go over to our CA here. And we're just going to do new certificate template to issue. And then apparently we're going to wait for it to do its thing. And then so here we find it. We're looking for our FC Kerberos authentication template. And we're going to select on that, and we're going to click OK. And so now it's available on the CA. The auto enrollment GPO has been set up. So basically, we're good to go at this point. 
we would just wait for the auto enrollment client to run so it runs like every eight hours so we would just wait for that to run if you're testing this out for the first time or you're demonstrating it like I am there are some things we can do to speed up this process so I'm going to go on to my domain controller and I really have two options here I can do start util dash pulse to trigger the um, auto enrollment client or I can do a GP update for us it doesn't really matter uh, which one I do we'll just do a start util pulse and see how well that works out before I run that, I just want to show you that I don't have, let me refresh this. I don't have any certificates here in the local computer store. So here we go, start util dash pulse. So that will hopefully trigger the auto enrollment client. And the auto enrollment client as part of its function will go out and enroll for that template. So we're going to go back to our computer MMC. If you're not familiar how to open this up, you're just going to basically do um, start LM to MMC. And then we're going to go into personal. And then here we go. We have my certificates. So this is a cert required. So we could test it out. You can do a LD. You know what? Actually, it would be best to do, see if I can do LDP from not on the box, but from another machine to connect to it. So I'm going to do ldp.xe and then I'm going to connect and connect and then I'm going to do fcdc01.4th Wow, got that way wrong. Uh, fourth coffee.com and then uh, we're just going to do 636 and uh, we should definitely be able to connect. And we're able to connect, so that works. We can go ahead and disconnect. And if you want to, you can try the global catalog port 2, which would be 32, oh, got that completely wrong, 3269. Pretty sure that's what it is. And click OK, and I connect. So definitely this is working. So again, we said that this is a common scenario that you would use for deploying uh, LDAPS certificates or domain controller certificates to the domain controller. Um, just the only reason you might try uh, some of the other options is you're not happy with the names that get put on this template. So if we go back and take a look at this machine. So we have, um, if we look at our subject name here, um, so the alternative name, we have the domain controller name, and then we have the name of the domain, both the short name and the long name. If I were was other stuff I wanted to add in here, then I'd have to do basically like an offline request, and then I can set up auto enrollment to renew the cert. Or if I had multiple server authentication certs for whatever reason, maybe there's another application that uses its own TLS cert or server authentication cert for some reason, and I need to use a different cert for of that best on the domain controller, then I would use the Active Directory Domain Services Store, which I'll cover in another video. But unless those are my issues, this is the way I'm going to go. And this certificate is going to automatically re renew it like 85% of the certificate's lifetime, whatever that, whatever 85% of one year is. And so now I'm basically um, good to go at this point as long as anybody connecting to LDAPS. Um, trust the uh, CA that I issued this from, and can check revocation and all that, then we're good. And if you can get away with doing it this way, this is the easiest approach and uh, the way to go. But I will have a couple more videos where I cover um, the other scenarios that I just discussed. One is using um, custom names, like there's some custom names that you don't get in the auto-enrolled certificate that you'd like to put in there. <coughs> or if you have multiple, <coughs> excuse me, if you have multiple um, server auth certs and you want to specify which one you use for LDAPS on the domain controller. So those are the two other scenarios. So that pretty much wraps it up for this. So again, I do have an article on my blog that covers this in detail. If you just kind of want to go there and look at that, that's a perfectly good way to do it. So next video is going to be on deploying um, LDAPS certs with custom names. So if you want to go ahead and check that one out. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, taking the time to, to visit. 
Today is New Year's Eve, so uh, if you are watching this today, hopefully you have a good New Year. I think we're all looking forward to uh, 2021. So anyways, thank you for taking the time to view this video, and uh, Happy New Year.